I, I am myself uh, a, a queer man, and, and I did research uh, during my uh, PhD uh, on other queer men. And so I know firsthand um, the rewards and challenges of doing research on a topic for which you have lived experience. And most of the students that I work with now also come from that perspective. They're motivated to do research about 2S LGBTQ health because they either themselves identify as 2S LGBTQ uh, or they have a loved one who, who does and perhaps has struggled. And so they're, they're, they're very motivated. Um, and so what I try to do in my research lab at the Reaffirm Collaborative is to create space for people to bring their personal experiences and their personal reflections. Um, sometimes in uh, the research discipline where I was trained in, in biomedical epidemiology, we tend to think that we need to take a very uh, purely objective stance in research, that we have to be able to separate our personal biases from the, from the data that we're collecting. Um, in, in the kind of social epidemiology work that I do, we instead say, no, those personal experiences quote unquote biases actually can be a strength. It doesn't mean that you don't acknowledge them, you still acknowledge them and you understand how they might motivate the questions that we're asking and how we frame our research. But we welcome those experiences. Um, and that's something that I've found, at least so far, uh, is really a, a big benefit uh, from an equity and inclusion perspective. It means that someone who might feel a little bit out of place on another research team can feel at home in, in our research lab.